Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, a modernized text editor that we've implemented in our latest release of VA Smalltalk. Um, I'm not Seth Berman. <laughs> Seth isn't here, but he was the, the lead developer on this activity uh, on my team. And uh, I am taking his place and doing at least a marginal job of representing him. Uh, but Seth is the one who knows all the details of this code. So you may ask me some questions that I can't quite deal with, but I will get you answers. OK, let's go. OK, next page. There we go. OK, um, so why did we do this? Why did we uh, implement a new text editor? I mean, VA Smalltalk has been around for 20, 20 years, uh, maybe just maybe 21. I don't know. And we've always had the same text editor from day one. It actually hasn't changed significantly. Well, it sort of worn out. You know, It has the uh, capability of an editor from 20 years ago, not the capability that you'd like to see in an editor today. So um, we set some requirements. Um, we wanted something that was, was modern looking, had modern capabilities, um, something that would take advantage of our latest technologies and the latest technologies in the industry something that would minimize the changes to our existing system, because that means we can make it uh, at least nearly transparent to our users uh, that we've made this change if um, they don't care. Because if you just want to enter text, um, that's what you want to do. And you don't want to have to, all of a sudden, change what you're doing, because we changed the editor. So we maintain full API compatibility with the old text editor. Um, and uh, we're structurally compatible with our widget framework. In VA Smalltalk, we represent the GUI using native widgets. So on Windows, we're using Windows widgets. On Linux, we're using, oh, sad to say, Motif widgets, um, and et cetera. Well, there's no et cetera. Those are the two we support. So we need to stay compatible with that framework, which says at the top level, there's a common set of APIs that work on all platforms. And that's the level that uh, developers program to. Beneath that, there's a set of OS platform-specific APIs that actually talk to the system you're running on. So that's the, the framework we have, and we want to keep that way. Scintilla helps us in that way because it has the same API on all platforms. So we, have a very, we can have a very minimal platform-specific um, set of support for Scintilla because you know, we only need enough to get it started. And after that, um, we can use the common layer to talk to it. Um, and it has to be in line with our long-term strategy, which is not to use Motif anymore, but to use uh, GTK uh, for text on, uh, on Linux and the other AIX systems. Um, and Scintilla fits into that. And we want to make all this new capability available to our customers, the new capability of this widget that's over and above um, the existing text widget. So that's why we have provided the full API of Scintilla at our common widget layer. OK, and I'll be mentioning that again. Um, so we chose Scintilla as a base for building this new text editor. Uh, Scintilla is an open source library designed specifically for building text editors. Um, so. Uh, there's a good choice. Um, it's got so many features that our text editor didn't have. 
um, and they are oriented specifically toward developing um, text editors and more specifically source code editors. Um, it's been around for 14 years, so it's had a lot of time to mature, and it's continually under development. New features are being added uh, quite regularly. It has a large support in the community. Um, it's used by a number of um, code development um, products. Uh, code Blocks is, uh, is an IDE. Notepad++ is a text editing uh, program. Tortoise SVN is a system for interacting with SVN systems, code management systems, and there's many others. And as I said, it's cross-platform. The API is 99.8% the same on all platforms. So cool, we've got just the right thing to use here. Is, is it written in C or? It is written in C. Okay. So our approach was, as I said, we have a common API, so we just integrated Scintilla into that um, by wrapping the, the DLL that Scintilla provides us. Um, and doing that by providing a new text widget. Uh, as I say, full API support for Scintilla 3.3.3, which was the current version as of about three months ago. So current version when we released the code. Um, we provide compatibility methods, so all the things that don't map directly to Scintilla can be mapped from our old text widget. And we're off and running. Now, um, one thing we did is we made Scintilla optional. So you can turn it off, you can turn it on. Um, if you turn it on, it's used um, in all the text uh, environments in your Windows system. So text entry field, um, workspace, browsers, code panes, except the transcript. The transcript is always a CW text, and that's so that we always have some place to get back to uh, if Scintilla breaks. <laughs> There's always some place you can write to. Now, when you say all text entry, is, is that in the IDE, or does that include generated applications? Um, currently, it's not the default for generated applications. It's the it's the default for IDEs. Yeah, okay. um, but you can you can absolutely use this capability in your generated applications. We have not enabled it yet in the composition editor or in Window Builder, okay. which which is the thing that would make it easy to use yeah. in uh, runtime apps. Okay. Um, one of the things we get with this is um, Microsoft's technology that uh, to provide higher quality font rendering. And this is called direct write. And this means that the fonts are rendered in the graphic processor unit instead of in the CPU. Um, this is a little bit faster. Most people would never notice. Uh, the quality is much better uh, especially if you have large fonts. Uh, on small fonts, once again, unless you're extremely critical, you might not notice. But for people who want the uh, kind of the best quality output on their screens, um, direct write is important to them. So in terms of text editing basics, um, our new text editor provides auto indent. So if you're writing a line of text, you don't complete it, but you hit return, it will indent the next line because it assumes it's a continuation of the line of text. Okay, auto indent. Um, the same indent as the line before? Or the no, it's, it's one, one tab yeah. further in. All right. So. You know, if you're doing if you're doing like um, cascaded messages, they'll be automatically lined up and indented, one one tab. 
Um, keyboard shortcuts, tabbed in, down, shift tab to unindent. Um, alt up and down, you can, you can move a selected block of text from one place to another, like out of your if true block into the if false block. Um, I'm not sure I see many other places where you might use that, but you know, other people might find a lot of use for it. Until people decided to put it in. So. Well, yeah, it's it's a it's a standard feature of Scintilla, so no problem. Drag and drop. You can select uh, a block of text and you can drag it to where you want it. Um, something we found after actually after we released the code, uh, you know, we released the code and didn't even know that you could use the mouse wheel to change the size of the font um, in, in a text area. So this is really cool for doing demos because you can make the code really big so everybody can see it. Um, and the margin area. So if you've used VA Smalltalk in the past, you know that there is a, a margin area on the left margin that is usually invisible, but if you set a breakpoint, It'll show up, and the breakpoint icon will be there. Um, well, it's no longer invisible. It's always visible. Um, breakpoint icons will go in there. We have some ideas about other things that we can put in there. For example, um, cursor position uh, indicator. So you know, I don't know about you, but my eyes aren't what they used to be, and sometimes I lose track of where the cursor is. Uh, so if we put like a little line in the margin area that tracks the line that the cursor is in, that, that might help a lot of um, people with poor eyesight. Um, pardon me? Bookmarks. Bookmarks. Uh, we don't have those yet, but uh, I will take a note on that. Yeah. Um, so the other margin area... Uh, which is not in 8.6, but will be in, in the next release, is for code folding. Uh, code folding means um, you can compress uh, a, a block of text or comments. And we feel this is particularly interesting for comments because sometimes we write big blocks of comments at the top of a method, and, oh, my God, where's my code? So... Um, um, I'll be talking about that in just a minute. Yeah, I will get to it. Yeah, I will get to it. So for the next release, we're only going to support uh, comment folding, not code folding. Um, but that question is still relevant because we have to find the comments. Yeah. Yeah. So. What it does is it compresses a, a large comment or any comment that you select into one line. And if you want to see it again, you just uncompress it. And finally, something that we really like is infinite undo or um, almost infinite undo. You eventually, I guess, could run out of memory. Um, but um, we have had in, since probably um, 15 years ago anyway, one level undo on text edit. So you type something, you can undo that, but no more. Uh, with our new editor, you can undo all the way back to the beginning, and it keeps track so that it will know that you've undone all the way back to the beginning. And if you try and move away, say, from the code editor, it won't ask you if you want to save it again, because it knows it's exactly what was there in the beginning, if you undo all the way back to the beginning. For the next release, um, we're actually going to mark the tabs on the code browsers um, with red icon versions of their normal icons to show that they're dirty. So you start typing in the code browser, the icon turns red, 
you undo until the icon isn't red anymore and you know you're back to the beginning. And you can also identify which, which, thing, which pieces of the browser have dirty code in them. The, um, the, the undo supports uh, coalescing of changes. Um, coalescing of changes means you really probably don't want to undo a character at a time. You know, you'd like to undo maybe a word at a time. So there is, there is standard support for coalescing contiguous insertions and deletions into one block of undo. And there's an API, so if you don't like the way we do it, you can do it some other way. Um, so uh, it is true that Scintilla offers some code completion support. We don't use it. Um, we think that ours is better, uh, more complete, because it's driven off of um, the Smalltalk syntax. Um, so we have our own code completion, but you can use Scintilla's uh, code completion widget to work with our code completion. So there's now, there's now a choice of three different code completion widgets. A very basic one that will just show you um, what the string that you're, that you're typing in might uh, result in if you went all the way to the end in the name of a selector, for example. Um, the scintilla one, which has some more capability, but not a lot. And our code completion uh, pop-up, which will actually show you the potential objects that the method we're suggesting uh, relate to. So if you say, if you start to write at colon um, put, um, that might be related to a collection. So we'll show you where that method exists in the class hierarchy. Um, so as I say, three different levels of code completion uh, visualization, and they're all stylizable through our, uh, through our customization and configuration uh, menus. Um, I yes? I don't remember how it works on VA small code completion. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you write a selector with more than one keyword. Yes. How, how do you go from one keyword to the other one? Is there an easy way to move? To uh, move um, so yeah, after you've selected the... Yeah, when you select, for example, add put. Yes. I, roll, I write uh, add and select add put, and then I have to put the, the add parameter and then the put parameter. Right. So the cursor will be positioned after the at colon. That's right. And yes. How you go to the, put the, is there an easy way? Um, you have plumbed my depth of knowledge and okay. found me failing. Okay. Um, I don't know. Okay. I bet. I think there is, though. I think there is, though. I just don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So you know. Yeah. 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 Probably so. Um, what we found out is that we have, you know, in doing Scintilla, we've introduced a lot of keyboard combinations. <laughs> and uh, we don't have one central sort of repository for people to look at and say, you know, here's what all these different key combinations mean. You know, there's some documented here and some are over there. And, you know, quite honestly, we cross our fingers that um, we haven't duplicated uh, usage. But um, one of the things that uh, Scintilla has brought to our attention is we need to have uh, kind of a central place that manages key mapping um, and let the user change the key mappings. So that's something that uh, will be coming in the future. Um, in terms of syntax color highlighting, Scintilla has, has a lexer for small talk. Um, it works. Um, but it's, it's not con really context sensitive, or at least not as context sensitive as we need. It doesn't drive off 
any sort of a parse tree. Um, it's purely a text analyzer. Um, but fortunately, uh, Scintilla provides hooks for the user to provide their own lexer. And so we use that capability and to provide a lexer based on our uh, uh, understanding of the Smalltalk code, which is uh, probably quite naturally a lot better than Scintilla's, seeing they're not in the business of Smalltalk. Um, and so... I don't suppose you're releasing that parser back to... Oh, yeah. It's all... It's all oh, back to Scintilla? Back to Scintilla. Uh, I don't know that they'd want it because it depends on our, on uh, you know, kind of our entire kind of infrastructure. I think it'd be, it, I think it would be difficult for them to, to include it as a lexer in their environment. Their environment of lexers is pretty simple. It works, you know, and it, it works quite nicely. I mean, if you want to edit a .st file, it's pretty good, yeah. but. Uh, it doesn't understand context. Um, so by using this capability, we can let Scintilla identify what needs to be um, stylized, highlighted. Uh, and there's a lot of other stylizations besides just highlighting. And um, Scintilla will ask us to actually provide the highlighting they will identify what needs to be highlighted, and we will highlight it or stylize it. OK. Stylizers. And this is where we get into uh, your question, Mariano. Um, we have two different um, stylizers that run in the background. Uh, one uh, analyzes what is assumed to be reasonably well-formed small talk code. So this is code that you'd be uh, typing into a browser code pane. The other one, which is used in inspectors and workspaces, is designed to be able to analyze snippets of code that are perhaps poorly formed. So it has a much fuzzier um, attention span to the, to this, to the syntax. Um, because of this, because we're able to do this, we can now offer color in our inspectors and workspaces where we didn't have that capability before. And this approach, which doesn't depend on our standard parser, but depends on the, uh, the scanner and parser that was built to do code completion, is much faster. Um, because, for one thing, it's only restyling the part of the window that you can see. Um, our old, for, for example, our old syntax highlighter, um, when it was asked to highlight and it was driven by a timer loop, would restylize all of the text in the window. Um, and if you had a lot of stuff that was off screen, it was just a waste of time. But it definitely affected the performance. Um, so I mentioned uh, we have a custom uh, scanner and parser to support this that came from this really an enhanced version of what's in um, uh, what's in code completion. Um, we do bracket highlighting, so we highlight both uh, complete brackets and incomplete brackets. Um, so that you can tell um, where you've got too many closing brackets, too many opening brackets. It's usually not enough closing brackets, in my case at least. And it does this um, both by highlighting the, the closing bracket that's extra uh, and uh, putting the squiggle underneath the... Uh, the text, which is the other stylization, is squiggles. And we'll be talking more about squiggles. We are, we've started using squiggles a lot. <laughs> you know, once you, once you find a hammer, you start, you know, you start hitting everything with it. Um, so bracket highlighting is configurable. You can change the colors. 
can change the background, the foreground. You can turn it on and off. Uh, this is this is sort of a standard feature of pretty much everything having to do with Scintilla and code completion is they are extremely customizable features. Um, we've got smart highlighting. Smart highlighting means uh, if you select a string, we'll highlight that string because you selected it, and we'll highlight every other occurrence of that string uh, within the text pane. Okay. Now, uh, it would be nice if they didn't all look alike. So the one that you selected is has one set of stylization. All the others have a different set of stylization. And I'm going to talk at sort of near the end about some things that we've already done for 861, and we'll come back to this. Um, we do block, high, block argument highlighting the same way. And because this is an overlay on the text, it's actually an underlay on the text, your, your normal syntax highlighting still shows even when um, you've selected something and the other uses of it are highlighted. So, this is an example. Uh, where is an integer used? Uh, I highlight an integer and it shows me all the places. Um, another place, uh, I pick a, a, um, a, a variable reference right down here at the end in dark red, shows me all the others. Um, block args we talked about. Configurable. Oh, line numbers. Ah, this is small talk. We don't need line numbers. Um, well, yeah, we do. If you're in a workspace, line numbers can be really convenient. So this is also configurable. Uh, I turn them on for, for workspaces, turn them off everywhere else. Uh, I'm not going to talk about breakpoints. We already did. Call tips. If you're in the debugger and you, and you hover over a, a variable, will show you uh, the value of that variable uh, right in the text pane. Mm, stylizable. Oh, squiggles. So everything's, everything's now done with a squiggle. Unidentified uh, reference, you get a squiggle and a, and a call tip. Um, unimplemented method, squiggle and a call tip. We used to put something in line in the text that you had to delete. Uh, more examples. They're configurable. Huh? Surprise. Um, what's next? Okay. Smart variable renaming. Remember we had smart uh, highlighting where you select something, we highlight everything else. Okay. Now you change the value of that thing that you selected. All the others change also. Key combination for that. Lint warnings. We're starting to pick up um, because of our, because we have this parser tokenizer in the background, we can do things like identify variables that are never used, variables that uh, are read but not written, um, and more things to come. This is just the beginning. I talked about comment folding. Now, the lint warnings is because you have your own custom parsing. Yes. Isn't it? Okay. Yes. That is. I mean, you can display them nicely with Scintilla, but Scintilla doesn't really do that. No, well. Scintilla is not doing that. They're not doing that kind of, of analysis. Right. Right. Once right. again, their Alexa is right. you know, kind of pretty simple, yep. Yep. plain vanilla. Um, we, have, we have a lot more that we want to do using Scintilla, um, but this is, this is what's actually done now. Um, the reason I'm actually not doing a demo today is because the lint warnings broke the latest build, which is the one I, I brought. So it doesn't, you know, it didn't just break lint warnings, it broke. Um, Are you planning to add spell checking or something like that? Well, we already have spell checking oh, okay. in Code Assist. Oh, okay. So, um, so that's there already. Um, 
Okay, but you're going to use the same kind of... Uh, yeah, squigglies. squigglies. Yeah, we love squigglies now. <laughs> um, we even have, I don't remember what it's for, but we have one of these squigglies is gold colored. Uh, I keep trying to convince Seth gold doesn't show up very well, but... You know, iPhones. Yeah. <laughs> when uh, the squigglies can actually be boxes or dotted lines, or there's a lot of different stylizations available. And so, uh, you know, we'll kind of pick something that looks nice to us, but because it's fully customizable, you can change it. Okay. Other questions? Mariano. Yes, just the, the Sintel API for the, the framework. Does it provide um, the functionality uh, like the typical editor, like the Beam editor, where you can uh, delete one line, go to the end of the line, go to the beginning of the line, go to the end of the text pen, and duplicate the line? I mean, all those things that you find, you know, if, if the library provide that, because it, just to know if it would be easier for you in the future to add those kind of yeah. uh, functionality. Did you see whose name was on the presentation? <laughs> Did you see whose name was on the presentation? Not mine. <laughs> Not mine. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, so, um, so the answer is um, there is a lot of scintilla capability we're not using. Uh, I don't. Kn I don't know what it all is. So um, um, we can look actually. Uh, yeah, we can. We can look. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you see anything, if if you see anything in Notepad plus plus, we can do it too, whatever it is. Okay, other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.